Now, this is actually kind of a cool story that we're going to cover. So, a billionaire, Joe Tsai, is the mystery buyer behind a $157 million Manhattan apartment deal. So, let's get into this story. So, the Alibaba co founder, Joe Tsai, is the mystery buyer behind a $157 million apartment deal in Manhattan's most prestigious condo tower, according to people familiar with the deal. So Tsai, who also owns the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets NBA team, purchased two full floor condo apartments at 220 Central Park South and two, transactional, uh, two transactions totaling $157.5 million, say people close to the transaction. And the purchase mark was believed to be the third most expensive home ever sold in the U.S. And the priciest home ever sold in America is in the same building. Ken Griffin's purchase of four floors, 51 through 53, for $238 million in 2019. By the way, I don't think that's a uh, four floors. I think that's three. 51, 52, 53. That's three floors. What are they even talking about? <laughs> well, they squared up on that one, right? But imagine this, right? Imagine that you're so rich that you not only own an NBA team, but you also own the third most expensive home in America. That's so crazy. So size purchase spans two floors, the 60th and one above, and has sweeping views of Central Park and Midtown Manhattan. And the deal also includes the studio apartment on the 18th floor, likely for staff. Now, here's the thing, right? And feel free to contact us at 40inbox.com to give us your thoughts. But... Let's say that you get $157 million to spend on a property, right? For you, yourself, right? Would you spend $157 million to have neighbors? Like, Just think about that for a second, right? Would you spend $157 million? dollars to have neighbors okay neighbors who the hell wants to have neighbors if you have over a hundred million dollars to spend on a home right like that's the thing that i never understood because you know we if anyone out there ever binge watch you know those like super expensive home tours right or like they're like the mega mansions of like 50 million, 80 million, maybe even 100 million mansions, right? Like 100 million dollar mansions, right? You got to start wondering like, yeah, that looks cool. But there's still neighbors, right? <laughs> like the houses all look cool. The inside all looks cool. But then you like take like one step back and you're like, but wait a minute, your neighbor is like five feet from your house, right? Oh, look, your neighbor can go look right into your property. Oh, look, you got no privacy. Oh, look, high taxes. Oh, look, the maintenance cost of everything per month is in the millions, right? And that's the thing that like a lot of people don't actually understand, right? Because, you know, like buying a house like this or like an apartment like this isn't just the $157 million, right? This is probably like 10 to $12 million minimum per year that this person is having to spend just to maintain it, right? With, when it comes to like property taxes, insurance, electricity, all that sort of stuff, right? And also, you know, like the whole like staff as well is like... Do you really want to deal with all the hassle? So you got to really ask yourself, like, what, like, where do you see or what do you 
want your life to be like in the future. And like mastering your money and like building a strong financial foundation will help make that like vision more clear to you, right? And if you need help mastering your money, go down below and learn how to master your money. But here's the thing, right? It doesn't really matter how much money you make. It matters how much money you keep and how much money you put towards investments, right? So hopefully this individual doesn't put anything like this when it comes down to like debt. I hope none of this is in debt because there is no reason to be going into debt if you have over $100 million to buy a property, right? Like it just doesn't make sense at all. So let's continue. So size purchase spans the two floors, the 60th and one above, and has sweeping views of Central Park, blah, blah, blah. So thanks in part of the Griffin's purchase. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Thanks in part to Griffin's purchase as well as blue chip buyers like Sting and Daniel Auk. 220 Central Park South has continued to store in value even through the pandemic. And it's more than 90% sold out. So the units purchased by Sai. Both sold for more than their original sale price, so he overpaid. So the 61st floor sold for $51.4 million last year, while the 60th floor sold for $50.9 million. So a spokesperson for Sai didn't immediately comment, but the purchase comes at a sensitive time for Sai and Alibaba. So Alibaba shares have fallen by a third since October, and Chinese authorities are cracking down on the country's big tech companies to curb their power and data reach. So Sai's fellow Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma has largely retreated from public life after he criticized Chinese regulators and Beijing scuttled the initial public offering of his fintech giant Ant. Now here's the thing, right? If you're like in one of their situations, I would just sell everything and like bail, right? Like if you had to deal with like a country like China, just bail. Right, like if you made the money, make even more money, clear everything out, go to a different like country and live like a free life because they're not free. So Sai remains executive vice chairman and the second largest shareholder of Alibaba, and Sai, who is worth about ten billion dollars, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Now this is actually important, right? Because you might be thinking, oh, you know, spending $157 million, you know, that's so much to spend. But when he has like $10 billion, when he's worth $10 billion, this is basically the equivalent of him buying a toaster for a loaf of bread that he just bought. Like that's like the combination of the two, right? Because he did two transactions. It's basically like him buying a toaster and buying a loaf of bread for the toaster, right? Like this is like the equivalent. So it's literally like nothing to him when it comes to like finances. Like when it comes to like like true impact on his wealth, it is literally nothing, right? So Sai was born in Taiwan, attended school in New Jersey, and lived and worked in New York in the mid-1990s working as a lawyer and private equity executive. And after making his fortune in China at Alibaba, he spends his time between San Diego and Hong Kong, and he holds both Canadian and Hong Kong passports. Now, this is actually very interesting. So I did not know this, but this is actually very interesting because, one, China doesn't view Taiwan as like a legitimate country. They're going to probably try to take over Taiwan, right? And so to have basically potentially like the second wealthiest human being in China basically be from Taiwan, be part of Hong Kong, has a Canadian passport as well, there's a good chance that potentially he might make a move to Canada. Like he might move to Canada and completely exit China, which would be very interesting to actually see. Sasai purchased a minority stake in the Brooklyn Nets in 2017 and purchased the remainder of the team in 2019 along with operating rights to Barclays Center for a total of more than $3 billion. So Sai also sits on the board of NBA China and owns the WNBA's New York Liberty. So Sai often attends Nets games until the New York Post. He planned to become more visible in New York after buying the team. New York is an incredible city. 
I have an affinity for New York, he told the Post in 2019. My first job after law school was in New York. I met my wife here, so New York, to me, is my second home. Now, he will have an even bigger home for his second home. Either way, this is pretty cool. Feel free to contact us at 40inbox.com with your thoughts on the matter. But either way, what you can learn from this situation is that he's actually spending his money wisely in the sense that when it comes to like in ratio to his like actual net worth, again, this is like him buying a toaster and a loaf of bread for the toaster. Like This is like literally nothing to him. This is basically him spending very below his means, which is crazy to say when someone's spending $157 million on something. But this is him spending far below his means. And a lot of people can really learn from this, right? Simply following that simple rule, spend less than what you make, you could live a pretty darn good life. So we'll see you in future episodes. But if you need help with mastering your money, go down below and learn how to master your money.